our scripture reading from Mark. For Mark 11, we read from Mark 11. Let's go. Mark 11. Mark 11. Mark 11. Mark 11. The Bible says, when they were nearing Jerusalem at Bethage and Bethany near Mount Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples saying to them, go into the village in front of you and immediately as you have entered into it, you will find a donkey's coat tied which no man which has never been ridden by anyone untie it and bring it here and i made you understand that this prophecy or this declaration of jesus telling the disciples to go and unloose or untie a donkey was a prophetic fulfillment of zachariah chapter 9 verse 9 that prophecy had already been given by the prophet by the name of Zechariah. Zechariah had prophesied that Jesus would enter into Jerusalem on a donkey. And then hear me. And when Zechariah made that prophetic decree and made that prophetic declaration, it was fulfilled exactly as he has said it. Even though the prophecy was given 600 years before even Jesus was born. And I told you on that premise, that is a sign that it doesn't matter how delayed your prophetic word may be, it will surely come to pass. Number two, I said the donkey is a typology of you and I. The donkey is a typology of a man who carried destiny, who carried prophecy, who has got a word running over his head, but he is not fulfilling the word. And I said to you, sometimes you need what is called the touch, the second touch. The donkey had a prophecy concerning his life that he is supposed, it is supposed to be in Jerusalem and he's supposed to be ridden on by the Messiah, but the donkey was tied to a village. The second touch, the second word from the master is what actually activated a release, my God. Mm -mm -mm. It's what actually activated a release for, for the fulfillment of the prophecy that was declared in Zechariah. Uh, I told you, most of the time, church of God or the people of God gets caught up in what God said and they neglect what God is saying. There is a difference between what God said and what God is saying. The same God that said in the book of 2 Kings chapter 20 verse 1 that Isaiah the major prophet should break the news to Hezekiah the king that he was going to die is the same God within a matter of I mean, hours or minutes actually went back and told Isaiah, go back and change the words you declare and say he's no more going to die, but he's going to live. So, so that, that, that there is a difference between what God said was Hezekiah was going to die, but what God was saying at that present time was Hezekiah is going to live. What God said is that maybe you are supposed to be employed in a certain company somewhere but what God may be saying right now is that you are supposed to own your own business what God said is that maybe you are supposed to be in America as we speak but what God is saying is that you are possibly expected to come back home and set up your own business there is a place of what God said and there is a place of what God is saying you need a now where to to help you come out of 
of breaking barriers. There are certain barriers. Some people are in a certain barrier because they are still in the place of what God said. You need a now word to be able to usher you and launch you into what God wants for your life. And I pray that God will take you to the place of understanding and knowing and having revelation into his word. Mm. And then I said to you, number three, the third thing I said is that the donkey was going through what I call environmental barriers. When the donkey left the village, people spread their clothes for the donkey to walk on. The same donkey that was ignored, the same donkey that was neglected, the same donkey that was seen as nothing, my God, the same donkey when its location changed, I said to you, people began to spread their garments for the same donkey to walk on. You need to understand the fourth thing I said is that blessings are locational. There are certain places you will be and you will forever remain stagnated and you may not understand. God is omnipresent but God does not bless everywhere. He said to Abraham, Abraham leave Haran and I will take you to a place and there I will bless you. My question is why couldn't God bless Abraham when he was in Haran? But Abraham needed to leave one location of delay to a certain location for God to release his unprecedented blessing upon Abraham. You need to understand my dear. You've got to come to the place of knowing and understanding that there are certain times that you need a location change. You need a certain, certain times you need to change location. You may be in Ghana but you remain poor and broke and struggling but you move and go to South Africa and you are succeeding. You may be in the US or UK, you may be struggling but you move and go to Kenya to relocate and your life will be doing well. There are certain blessings that are locational and there are certain people are said number five that carry grace for certain blessings and for grace to break barriers at certain locations I have got grace to break barriers in Kenya I have got grace to break limitations in Ghana I have got grace to break barriers in, in the UK Someone may try to do what I do in Kenya and may not be successful. Why? Not because they are not powerful. It's because they don't carry grace for that assignment. You need to understand we have got grace is to break certain barriers. And, 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 and my prayer for you is that every environmental barrier that has restricted and maligned you is breaking tonight in the name of Jesus. That you shall not be maligned, you shall not be restrained, you shall not be restricted in the name of Jesus. Uh, it's my prayer that God will take you to the place where your location does not limit you. That your environment does not limit you. That you will try, your influence will transcend beyond your location. That in Kenya you will be blessed. In South Africa you will excel. In Zambia you will do well. In the UK you will do well. In Ghana you will excel. That regardless of where life places you, you will be able to do well and excel. The Bible said there was a man called Joseph who was sold into slavery. Even in slavery he excelled. Even in, in bondage he did well. So he gave birth to two children. Manasseh and Ephraim. And he said the Lord has made me forget my struggle even in the land 
bondage of slavery. Mazakadoski be at And he says, he gave birth to uh, Manasseh means when he gave birth to his first son, he said, The Lord has made me forget my struggle. So he named him Manasseh. And he gave birth to the second born. He said, The Lord has made me fruitful, Ephraim, even in the land of struggle. Can I prophesy to hundred and two people tonight? I speak prophetically over people here that may God make you forget your struggles. Even at the place where the enemy thought you'll be stagnated, Joseph's relative thought they would not, he would not do well. But in the midst of slavery, God still made him break through. Can I prophesy to people who say, man of God, I have been confined, maligned, frustrated, but under this anointing, I am ready to expand, explode, and do well regardless where of where life has placed you. There is a certain force, a certain power, a certain anointing that can come upon your life that regardless of where life places you, you will excel. Uh, can I preach to 100? Just, uh, can I prophesy to only 300 people tonight who are ready to say, man of God, it doesn't matter where life places me, I will excel. Uh, I, 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 there are people that say, it doesn't matter where life places me, I will excel. I speak prophetically over your life, over your career, over your marriage. I decree and declare, may you receive an anointing from above to do well regardless of where life places you. Destiny can push you to the bottom. Destiny can push you down below life can place you at a place where nothing seems to work marriage fails business fails career fails your education fails but grace can pick you up and set your feet upon the solid rock the other day hannah after after struggling to have a child and, and, and in, in first Samuel chapter 1 the, the woman Hannah did not have a child and her life was sorrowful her life was in pain her life was frustrated in first Samuel chapter 1 in that chapter of Hannah's life he was frustrated his, his rival Penina kept mocking her because it was a bad chapter but in same first Samuel first Samuel chapter Chapter 2, but when we move from chapter 1 to chapter 2, the Bible says the scripture begins by saying, And Hannah rejoiced in the Lord. Can I speak unto someone who is ready to receive a rema today? In that one chapter of Hannah's life, it was pain, mockery, and rejection, and, and, and sorrow. But in the next chapter, Hannah was rejoicing and thanking God because God had turned her money into dancing. Can I speak the same prophecy over you right here? Maybe you are like Hannah. In that first chapter of your life, it was painful, frustrating, negativity, and, and everything you can think of. But I came with a sure word from Elohim. May Jehovah God touch you wherever you are and may help Heaven favor you wherever you are. May the hand of God turn and cut your chapter two in the name of Jesus. May a new chapter be opened. The chapter of favor. Come on, I open it to you. Hannah, in first Samuel chapter one, she saw mockery, rejection, pain, and, and, and barrenness. But in chapter two, the woman was rejoicing. May your chapter two be opened. May a new chapter be opened in your life. Anything that is like barrenness, like mockery, like shame, like disappointment, like pain that has made your life really get to the background. I pray in the name of Christ Jesus, the Son of God. May God cause you to advance and to excel today in the name of Jesus. I did not just come to encourage you. I came to 
give you a word from the Lord. If you are ready to receive a rema word from God, just say, man of God, I receive it. I know you may have been stagnated, barricaded. You may have been maligned and, and, and confined by the situations of life. But I command a new chapter to open in your life right here. Zaye Makodia Azuta. Mi Antos Kabaadia Azute. Hey Mazuni mi ante. Isakadua Papa. Every environmental barrier. Tonight we command it to collapse by fire. Today in the power that is confining you to your locality. The Bible said in the book of Matthew chapter 5. When we read from the verse 15 downwards, the Bible said, For we are the light of the world. He didn't say we are the light of a village. He didn't say you are the light of Mary. He didn't say you are the light of Accra. He didn't say you are the light of Luanja or Lusaka. He didn't say you are the light of Freetown. He said you are the light of the world. What that simply means is that your influence, your illumination, should transcend beyond the borders of your location. I pray for you. It is an error for you to be a Grace Hour member and to think local, think small, think that the only, the farthest you can go is Uganda. The devil is a liar. I pray for you and I speak over your life tonight under the anointing and the ocean of the Holy Ghost that may you transcend beyond your limitations. May your influence go beyond your, your borders. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Say, I am international. I refuse to be local. I am international. I receive grace and barrier breaking anointing. Say, I receive barrier breaking anointing. I am international. I will not be confined. I will not be restrained. I will not be limited. I will not be restrained. I will not be frustrated. I walk in the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost. Today I prophesy over the life of people watching me here. May grace locate you. May grace locate you. The first 1,000 people to receive it. May you testify in the next three months. If you are here, shout I receive. Shout I receive, shout I receive, shout I receive, shout I receive. In the name of Jesus, hear me. You cannot be confined by your environment. Break out and advance. You see, God does not like environmental confinement. Anytime God realizes That his people are confined to one place. He always comes and tell them to move. He always comes and tell them, leave this place, advance. You cannot be confined by your environment. You cannot be confined by your... You see, like I was telling you um, 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 yesterday, um, the two days ago or so, when, when, when the people left Egypt, they started to complain when they came to the wilderness. You see, please listen to me. On the road to you breaking through, on the road to your breakthrough, on the road to you getting to your prophetic destination, there will be frustration. If any man of God tells you, you will never be frustrated to, on the journey to your promised land, you, you, the person is lying to you. On the journey to your blessing, you will be frustrated. On the journey to your promised land, you will be frustrated. On the journey to where God has destined you to be, you will encounter opposition and frustration. 
<laughs> but if you don't throw, because the idea of the devil is, you know, why am I praying and I'm still under attack? Why, why is it like, no, is you are getting closer to your breakthrough. You are actually nearing your next level. The enemy wants you to be frustrated. The enemy wants you to go down. The enemy wants you to get to a place where you are giving up so that he wins and he makes sure you never get to your prophetic destination. You've got to understand the Bible says we are not ignorant of the deceptions, the, the, the wiles and the cunning deceptions of the devil. We are not ignorant of the deceptions. The devil is always deceiving. How did he check from Genesis in the Garden of Eden? How did he get man to sin? By deception, lying. The devil will lie to your mind. Ah, God has rejected you. The devil will lie to your mind. God is not with you. If God was with you, why is your life like this? No, it's a lie from the pit of hell. You need to get stay put and push in prayer. I know you are still feel like you are under attack. You refuse to refuse to buy into the tricks of the devil. Refuse to accept the fact that the devil is beating you to it. My God, I feel like preaching right here. You need to come to the place of understanding that God is able to shift your life, your marriage shift, your education shift, every single aspect of your life. Can I preach like I want to? You need to understand on the road to your fulfillment, you can encounter frustration, opposition and rejection. But you've got to keep pushing. 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 Zagadi bihadabaya. Listen to me. I need you to grow up. Don't, don't be like a baby believer. You understand? Grow up to the place of maturity. Don't let frustrations, little frustrations of the devil push you and make you give up and throw in the towel. Hear me? In Deuteronomy chapter 1, Deuteronomy chapter 1, Deuteronomy chapter 1, I preached this sermon before sometime. Deuteronomy chapter 1, reading from verse 6. It says, The Lord our God spoke to us in Horeb. Now, the children of Israel had left Egypt and they were on the journey to their promised land. And then, and then the God came and spoke to them in Horeb. And they, they, after, when they left Egypt, they had dwelt at a place called Horeb. And they dwelt there for a long time. And God came and told him, hey, why are you allowing environmental barriers to restrain you? This is not where I am taking you. I am taking you to the promised land. Don't be comfortable because you are no longer in Egypt. Can I, can I, can I shake some tables tonight? Let me shake some tables tonight. You were jobless and you have gotten a job that is giving you $200 a month. You, you are comfortable. Hey! Be, yes, I know you are jobless. You are, should be grateful for what God has given you. But that is not where God wants to take you. God has got a better plan for you. More than $200. I know people that earn $10,000 a month. What are you talking about with $200? That is not your destination. It is just a process. Don't settle in horror. I know you did not have a boyfriend for five years. So some guy has been testing you in the middle of the night, lying to you that he loves you. So you are over the moon. You don't even know how to control your emotions. You now you start putting on your status. Love lives here. Love lives here. Just because some guy started lying to you, he has not even proposed to you. You are, you, you are confusing yourself. Love lives here. I, I didn't know yet. life can be said sweet. Hey, my friend, don't jump to conclusion. There is a better thing than a boyfriend that tests you in the middle of the night. Don't. God wants to give you good 
marriage. Don't settle for Hore Paya Basuta. Hey, Mazuti Adia. That is Hore anointing. That is Hore. You are not in your promised land. You are not in Canaan. God said He's taking you to a land that is flowing with milk and honey. Your destination is the altar. Wedding ring on your finger. Not our love leaves here, me and my bay on ground. Ah, you and your bay can be on ground, but not in the altar. The devil is a liar. Let me tell you something. Don't settle for Horeb. Your destination is the promised land. Your destination is the promised land. Say, Papa God, take me to my promised land. I refuse environmental barriers. I refuse to be restrained and limited by environment. And I speak over my life. Zaye, my use, I see over seven people tonight. The Lord is speaking to me. By exactly September, you shall leave your location. I see you travel abroad for the first time. I hear seven, seven receive it. Are you one of the seven receive it? Countries you have never traveled to. God is giving you receive it by September. Receive it now, receive it now, receive it in the name of Jesus. Hold it. No, it's not your portion. You are going to Canaan. I refuse. I understand. I'm not saying don't be grateful to God for where God has brought you. Yes, it's good. Uh, God, God has brought us. God has helped us. We are at 1.2 viewers. It's good. Can by that we want to go get to 10,000 live viewers, 20,000 live viewers, 50,000 live viewers. Yes, you are at Horeb. It's a good place to be. That is Horeb. But when God said, I prophesy over your life tonight. Wherever God has destined you to be, you shall be in the name of Jesus. You shall not be restrained. You shall not be limited. You shall not be confined by the forces that restrain men. Zayik Adias. Robo Adias. Zikadua Papa. Hey, Matudi Ate. By the power of God. By the anointing of God. Say, I refuse to be confined. I refuse to be confined. Environment. It says, God said to them, why have you dwelt in you? You, you, got, you God spoke to us. You have dwelt in this mountain for a long time. Turn, resume your journey. Turn to the hill country of the Amorites. Then, say, God says, and to the hill country of the Amorites and to all their neighbors in the Arabah, in the hill country, in the in, in the Negev South country, and on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, the land of the Canaanites and the Lebanon, as far as the great river Ephi, Ephi, Ephratus, look, I as I have set the land before you, go and possess it. Go and possess, go and take possession of the land which the Lord swore to your fathers. There is a land God swore to you. Uh, there, there is a promise God gave you. There is a word God gave you. Mm, there is a sure word God gave you. It is not this. I know who, who, the, the place you are now looks like the promised land. Mm -mm. This is not the promised land. There is a better you than this. That is one of my quotes that I always used to challenge myself. I always tell myself, David, there is a better you than this. There is a better me than 1.2 views. There is a better me than, 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 than grace hour. There is a better, there is a better you than this. You need to tell yourself there is a better you. There is a better you than this. There is a better you than this. May you advance. May you possess. Then may you to possess your possession in the name of Jesus. So here, you need to always tell yourself, I am not settling for hope. I am going to the promised land. Don't be comfortable in your in your in your adversary. Let me read the scripture I was talking about. I think I skipped something. You know, when the children of Israel 
when the children of Israel came out of Egypt and they couldn't find certain things that they used to get in Egypt, they started getting, they started to complain. They said, Moses, we miss being in Egypt. In Egypt, there was garlic. There was fruits, melons, and, 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 and why are we confined to this place? Now, let's chapter 11. Now, when the people of Israel became, now the people became like those who complain and whine about their hardships. And the Lord had it. And when the Lord had it, his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burned among them. And he brought them. Verse, 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 let me skip to verse 4. The rabble among them who followed Israel from Egypt had greedy desires for familiar and delicious food. The Israelites wept again and said, Who will give us meat to eat? Who will pay my rent? Who we remember, he says, we remember the fight, we remember the, 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 the fish we ate freely without cost in Egypt. The cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. They are out of Egypt, but they feel like there was something in Egypt. There was something in the place of bondage that you wanted. Let me tell you, when God brings you out of your bondage, never desire to go back. You are some of you, you recall yourself back into your own barriers. This week we are breaking barriers. You recall yourself, but God has brought you out of barriers, God has brought you out of stagnation, God has brought you out of certain places of limitation. You want to go back to it. The devil is a liar. Don't go back to the barriers. That God brought you out of. Don't go back to the place that struggles. God has brought you out of a toxic relationship. Maybe if I was with John, maybe by now that it is cold, he will be warming my bed. But John was frustrating you. John was abusing you. John was messing you up. John even did not regard you as a human being. But the devil is making you feel that your place of confinement is better than the place where God has brought you. Never allow the devil to confuse you that your place of confinement and captivity is better than where God is taking you. Don't go back to the barriers. Don't go back to captivity. There is nothing behind you. Look at me. Look at me. You see me? This is the front. My eyes are at my front. My nose, front. My, my mouth, front. My hands are in front of me. My back, what is there? What is behind my... There is nothing good at my back. There is nothing sensible. There is nothing good behind me. Nothing good. If I tell like this, there's nothing good behind me. All my good things are in front of me. You understand? The best is ahead of you. The best of you is yet to come. The best of you is ahead of you. The best of you is yet to come. The best of you is yet to come. Somebody says, Papa, some of us, our good things are behind us. What good thing? I, I always have a problem with ladies that take a picture and they turn their back. I don't understand. What is behind you? Your face is at the front. What are you showing people? I don't understand. I'm yet to understand. I possibly I need to I need to make some of them understand. When they take a picture, they turn their back like this. Are you are you taking the picture of your front? And they have the audacity and the task to put it on social media. The good things are in front of you, my friend. Mercy on your head. Hear it. Hear me and hear me well. Don't allow the devil to deceive you that what the captivity you were in was better. It's a lie. The captivity you were in was a bondage, a place of stagnation. You don't have to be there. And I spoke about psychological captivity where the devil imprints 
doubts in your mind and you don't believe that anything good can come out of you and you feel that you are low, you are low class, you are some people are not your level. Hey, hear me. Never think that somebody is not your level. Everybody is your level. Hey, one of the pain, the saddest thing and the and most annoying thing I I, I I I I I don't like to hear is this he, he is not my class. Hey, who is not your class? Who are you? Everybody is everybody's class. They may not have what you have. They may not have um I mean you may not have um they may not have the big cars or you may not have the big cars they drive in, you may not have a big job like them, but don't ever dare say somebody is not your class. Everybody is your class. I don't have the money Elon Max have, but I cannot say he's not my class. For where? Does he have two heads? Does he have two um, four eyes? Maybe he cannot even maybe he cannot even see in the spirit. You understand? You need to understand. Don't ever say somebody is not your class. Break yourself, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. Don't put your mind under slavery and bondage and captivity. You need to break away from mental slavery and tell yourself you are able. When God gave the promised land to the Israelites, and it was time for them to go and spy out the land. They went and said, Hey, there are the children of Anak in the land. We cannot, they will consume us, they will overpower us. But Caleb and Joshua said, We are well able to possess the land. We are well able. Listen to me. Before even the people, some of you, you defeat yourself even before the devil defeats you. They said we were like grasshoppers in their side. Said we were like grasshoppers. Let me go to the scripture. Numbers chapter 13. Go with me. Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. Maziga vividimida. Numbers chapter 13. I want you to go. Psychological barriers. Tonight we are going to pray through that. Numbers chapter 13, verse 33. Listen to me. Next week is going to be a dangerous week. If you are in Ghana, Kumasi, hear me. Next week, Saturday, Sunday, I am in Royal Lameta Hotel with Dinah Entry Hamilton. We are going to be ministering powerfully. Then Hamilton will be singing powerfully, powerful worship throughout. And then after that, I will take over the microphone and pray, preach, preach. And minister in the prophetic is going to be powerfully dangerous. If you are in Ghana, meet me at the Royal Lameta Hotel at Tinka Junction, Amojo. Find a place, get to Kumasi, put on your Google Map, Royal Lameta Hotel. Make sure you get there early so that you don't sit in the gallery. Make sure you come with your friends and family. It is free to come. You need to be there, and your life will never be the same again. I mean, number chapter 13, verse 33. Let, let me let me go down. Number chapter 13. Number chapter 13. Okay, let me let me read from verse 1. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and said, Send men to spy the land of Canaan, which I am going to give this the sons of Israel. From each of their Father's tribes, we shall send a man. So God said to Moses, send men to go and spy the land. Now, hear the report. Verse 25. When they return from spying out the land. Number chapter 13, verse 25. At the end of the 40 days, they came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the sons of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. And they brought back word to the congregation and showed them the land's food. They reported to Moses and said, we were in the land where you sent us and certainly it does flow with milk and honey. The job God wants to give you, it flows with milk and honey. Don't allow anything to stop you from going to achieve it. Say yourself, I am well able. That marriage, it flows with milk and honey. That 
that business you want to set up, you have not set it up. They have not entered the land, but they say, the land flows with milk and honey. God sent me to tell you, there is something better ahead of you. It is a land that is flowing with milk and honey. Marriage flowing with milk and honey. Great job flowing with milk and honey. Great business is flowing with milk and honey. And nothing shall stop you. Hear this. But the people who lived in the land are strong. He said the food, the land is good. But the people who live in the land are strong. And the cities are fortified. And very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The people, the people descended from Amalek. Let me, let me. As they were speaking, here is Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession of it. For we are certainly able to conquer it. Uh, some of you, when you have got psychological barriers, this is what will happen. You start to give reasons why you cannot do what God has said you want to do. Psychological barriers. When psychological barriers are restraining you, they are not physical barriers. They are barriers in your mind. We can't do this. We can't. Man of God, you know, I really wanted to go to America, but I was refused this. Hey, do you know how many people have been refused this? Somebody out there. I know people who have been refused visa five times. Five times. To where they, they had to go to the extent of even changing their names. Getting new passport. You understand? They are Beatrice Ajimai. They changed the name to Nancy or say, What are you talking about? Don't allow things and in your mind to restrain you from possessing the land God has asked you to possess. Psychological barriers. Ah, this man they have given me, the man is not handsome enough. Psychological barrier. This man, you know, he's not hot. Being hot will not pay your bill. Psychological barrier. Hear me. Psy don't allow anything. God has given you the land. Go and possess it. As they were making noise, Caleb said, hey, quiet, let us go and possess it. But the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people of Canaan, for they are too strong for us. They had not started the battle, but they were already counting themselves as defeated foes. Why? They said, we are, they, the people are too strong for us. They have not even started the battle. See, never allow things in your mind to stop you from achieving what God has asked you to achieve. I, I, I know, I, I, I was talking to somebody who had a business. I like your confidence. Yes, I am confident in myself. Yeah, you must be confident. Do you think that God brought you this far in your life to, to shame you? There's a song say, God no go shame us. Maybe I should play that song after grace out. God no go shame us. Oh. God did not bring you this far to shame you. God is taking you somewhere. Don't allow limitations in your mind. Oh, I, I, I don't think I can do this. I don't think I can go this far. I don't think God did not bring you this far to shame you. God is ready to push you. You just have to let those barriers go and go and achieve what God has purpose for you. You are well able. You are so afraid, you put restrictions in your mind. Imagine they have not all started the battle. They said, Moses, we can't fight these people. They are stronger than us. They have not even engaged in a trial match, a friendly match with them to see whether they can fight. They just accepted defeat even before the battle. Let me tell you, never accept defeat even before you take an adventure. If you fail to take risk, failing to take risk is a risk on its own. Sometimes just one move, one step, one decision can make you break through. But the devil will use fear to strengthen you, make you feel you cannot. You cannot tell yourself, I can, I will. Say, I can and I will. I can and I will. I can, I will. I can do this. I can set up my own business. I can I can also go to the, the United States. I can get my papers and I will. I can get married. Yes, we know you are 46. We know you are 48. But you can and you will. You know, and you've got to tell yourself.
yourself, I can. Oh, you are you are 55. You will you build a house? Yes, you can and you will believe in yourself. Don't let nothing hold you back. Psychological barriers. I can. You will do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You will do it. I can and I will. Man of God, I don't have money. You can. You will. Man of God, it looks like I don't have support for my family. You can and you will. Man of God, no, don't just give me. See, psychological barriers will give you 101 reasons why you cannot do what you want to do. I, 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 don't, I don't think I can do this. I don't think that is the life of the devil. You can. They say, sir, the people are stronger than us. So they gave Israelites a bad report. They gave the, the Israelites a bad report. About finding and the land through which they went. Hear this. And the people and the people that we saw were men of great stature. And they and there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak. Um, uh, and there, and we were like grasshoppers before the. Uh, uh, we were, he said, we, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. So we were in their sight. He says, when we went there, we, when we looked at them, they are giants. We were like grasshoppers. The people didn't say the Israelites that went to spy the land are grasshoppers. They themselves started saying, when we look at those people, we are like grasshoppers. That is you there. I, when I look at that man, he's not my level. There is no body that is not your level. Every man is your level. Don't, huh? Papa, that man is not my level. Me. One day, I was talking to a certain lady, and then, and then he said to me, "Papa, I want to go and meet the governor." I, I was like, "Hey, why did you say you want to help me to?" Who? He mentioned the governor. I said. Now, this is a 25-year-old girl who lives in, I don't even want to mention the place, who lives somewhere on Tika Road, struggling to survive. He says, I am going to meet the governor. I said, okay, so what is the meeting about? She does not like, okay. Now, I said, I like her spirit. This one, she does, it's not about she lives somewhere in some bed sitter. No, whether she lives in bed sitter or not, she has book appointment with the governor and they are meeting to have conversation about how her life can get better. I said, That is my daughter. Go, the Lord be with you. You will do well. Hear me and hear me well. You need to understand. Don't mellow yourself just because you are broke. Don't mellow yourself because you don't have a car. Don't mellow yourself because some of the people that have got cars, eh? They are they are cars on on finance, cars in debt. Hear me. You need to believe in yourself that God is able. God is able. Don't feel so small. The, the children of Israel said, we were like grasshoppers. We, we, we were like grasshoppers. They saw themselves as grasshoppers. Meanwhile, the people are not even told them how they, they look. Hear me, hear me well. People, you need to understand that God is able to make you. The grace that make people, mm, Mazigabaya, the grace that make people rise. People, see, if you don't break yourself from psychological barriers, eh, the devil will always take advantage of you because the devil knows once you start putting fear in you, you back off and you can't rise. The devil will make you, make you start binding demons when they are not supposed to be bound. Psychological barriers will make you feel that everybody that is rich is using juju and blood money. By you yourself, you have restrained yourself. Psychological barriers will make you feel that every lady that has a big job had to do something, give certain sexual favors. No, it is not everybody that gives sexual favors. People broke away from psychological barriers, confronted what they needed to confront. There is a saying by C.J. Lewis, I think. I think it was C.J. Lewis that said, she says, the cave that holds your treasure is always the cave that you fear. Let me take it again. He said, the cave that you fear is most of the time the cage that holds your treasure. The cave that you fear to enter 
Most of the time is the cave that holds your treasure. The land the Israelites feared to enter is the land that held their treasure. You need to break away from psychological barriers. You need to break away. God is able to take you there. Break away. Break away. Break away from every psychological barrier. I am very confident in what when when God gives me a lead to do something, I go. It doesn't matter the opposition. It doesn't matter the forces. Because let me tell you, otherwise, eh, if you are always thinking, and the other side part of psychological barrier is when you are always thinking about what, what people will say. So what, man of God, what, what will people say? I keep telling you, I changed that thing from 2014, 2013, somewhere 2014, 2013 there. I told myself, I was before I used to be very concerned about what people say. But I told myself, I realized that, let me tell you, if you always cage yourself waiting because you are afraid of what people will say, you will never do nothing. It's psychological barrier. The devil knows you are too concerned about people's opinions. You will not do nothing in life. You will not achieve anything. Me, I care less. <laughs> I don't even give a hoot what you think. What you, it, 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 it. Let me tell you something. It is not if God is with you and what you are doing is in line with the will of God. Forget the masses. Because when you decide to be poor, they will talk about you. When you decide to be rich, they will talk about you. If you drive a small car, they will talk about you. If you drive a big car, they will talk about you. If you decide to get married, they will talk about you. They, say, they will say your husband is a bad man. If you decide to stay single, they say, why are you still single? Everything you do, men, people will talk about it. So please, live your life. Don't be so controlled. I'm not saying. Say sometimes you have to look out for what people are. I mean, well, set the opinions of people, but you should not allow the opinions of men to control what you do. No, everything you do, people will talk. Like the way I'm preaching now, somebody is concerned. Why is he wearing a shirt? Why is he not wearing a suit? Why, why, why is he this? Why is he that? So, can he, can he broadcast from a camera? Can he do this? It's not like I care. The message is being communicated. You understand? For me, I have got very little attention to what people say. Because if you are always thinking about what people will say, eh? <laughs> even if I cut my head and I give it to people to drink tea, cocoa, hot chocolate from, people will still talk. Do what pleases God. Do what, what pleases God and yourself. Let me give you one thing, one thing and I move on. Are you ready for this bombshell? I don't know all the rules to success, but one sure rule to failure is living to please people. If you tell me, Papa, give me the, the rules to success, all the laws to success, I don't know them. But one sure thing I know you will fail is when you are always living to please people. It is guaranteed root to failure. When your life is motivated by the opinions of men. Yes. When I started Grace Hour, I, who, who didn't talk? People said what? Now they are joining. They are trying it. You need to understand. May Jehovah God help you. Break away from psychological barriers. Those who matter don't care. And those who care don't matter. True. The people who really matter to your life, they don't really care. And the people who don't matter. Yes. It's so true. And the people who care don't matter. You hear me? God is working on our minds, our spirits, our hearts ourselves so that we move from the place of being in mental slavery the other thing that i touched on yesterday was 
financial barrier. That one we know no. Money is restraining people. Today we are going to pray that everything, anything that is limiting you financially, Jehovah God will break it from your life. Say after me, every financial barrier, every barrier that is restraining my finances, I command let it catch fire. I command let it catch fire. I command let it catch fire. Money can be a barrier. A barrier. Financial barriers. Where money restrains you and you cannot live the life you want to live because you don't have money. You cannot be the person you want to be because you don't have money. Say, Father, every limitation the enemy has placed on my finances, let it collapse by fire. One of the surest ways of breaking financial barriers is learning how to tithe and to give. Tithing and giving is a key to breaking away from financial barriers. Somebody say, what is tithing? Honoring the Lord with one-tenth of your income. There are certain financial barriers. Prayer cannot break it. That is why most prayer warriors are broke. It's a hard truth, but I need to say it. Because they try, they want to, they want to, they want to, they are using the wrong tool to solve a good problem. You see, there is a problem. You need to use the right tools for the right problems. Most prayer warriors that pray a lot, they are broke. It's a hard truth, but that is what it is. If you want to come out of financial barrier, you need to learn how to honor the Lord with tithes. You will never lack. Financial barriers. Financial barriers. Financial barriers. If you learn how to honor the Lord, you see, God is a covenant. It's a relationship that you go it is not compulsory to honor. And I keep telling people, I am not teaching you this because I want you to come and tie to me. Forget it. If you bring your time to our ministry, we will receive it because we are the good soil. We are ministry legitimate right to collect tithe. As a priest, one of my job descriptions is to collect tithe. It is part of my JD as a priest, as a man of God. If you honor the Lord with our tithe, with your tithe to our ministry, fair enough, but I'm not teaching you because I want you to tie to our ministry. No. Forget it. You can go and tie to anywhere you want. Like I always say, you can send your seed. If you are led to give, you can do it. Be led to do it. If you are led to do it, you can do it. If you are not led, you can go and give your tie to Anglican Church, Methodist Church, any church, WJ, J, JC, whatever church you want, you can. That we are, I'm not teaching because, but I need to help you to do the right thing so that you will come out of that limitation and that place of stagnation where you are financially. Are you hearing me? Yes, you need to. It is your responsibility to honor the Lord. It is a response. It is an obligation. It is an obligation. The only thing is, if you are being fed here, you tithe here. If you are being fed elsewhere spiritually, you tithe there. But if this is the place you get your spiritual nourishment, it is wrong to tithe somewhere else if you are being fed here. And if it is wrong for you to tithe here, if you are being fed somewhere else, if this is the place you are growing spiritually, you are being, you are learning, you are praying with us, you are, you are connected to the anointing from this altar, it is equally right for you to do that. But otherwise, you can take it anywhere else where God will lead you. If you want to come out of financial barrier, learn how to honor God. And you see, the blessings with tithing transcends beyond you. It is the blessing that goes just beyond you. It multiplies to your entire family. Your children. Your children's children. It is a covenant relationship. Abraham learned to tithe even before the law was given. And he, his entire generation became blessed. Let me tell you. 
The Bible says, when Abraham met Melchizedek, which is a typology of Christ, the priest, Melchizedek, the Bible says, was the priest of Salem. Melchizedek gave Abraham bread and wine. And those are symbolic representation of two things. Bread was a symbolic representation of the word of God. And wine was a symbolic representation of the spirit. When bread is given you and wine is given you by a priest, you have to reciprocate by honoring the priest with your tithes or with the seed. When the man of God feeds you with the word, feeds you with the spirit of God, ministers to you, you must equally reciprocate. That is, the Bible says, after Melchizedek blessed Abraham, then Abraham became rich in gold, in silver, and in cattle. All you need is to honor the Lord with your time, and you be, you enter into the season of unprecedented wealth and blessing. As you do that, you will experience a mega overflow. Somebody say, but prophet, I've already spent my time. Fair enough, if you have spent it, that's fine. But this coming month, learn to honor the Lord. So that you can break away from financial barriers. Learn to sow seeds when necessary. When there is the need for you to sow seeds, learn to sow a seed. When you have to sacrifice, learn, learn to sacrifice. Let me tell you. Can I be very honest with you? My life is a life of sacrifice. I give a lot. I sacrifice a lot. I do sacrifice a lot. I I sow a lot because I know that is the key to my harvest. That is the key to my blessing. That is the key to my financial breakthrough. That is the key. You need to get to the place where you are able to tap. Let me read the scripture. The Bible says, the common scripture that is read in churches. Now here it is. It says, Verse 7, I'm not starting from verse 8, Malachi chapter 3, verse 7. He says, Yet from the days of your fathers you have turned away from my statutes and my ordinances and not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, How shall we return? You feel like God has left you. God says, Return to him. Return to me. He says, some of you, you have left me. You have run away. Me, God, I am here. Verse 7, Malachi chapter 3, verse 7. But you people should return to me, and I, the Lord, will return to you. God says, some of you, you have run away from me. You are, you are not even connected to me. Return to me, and I, the Lord, I will return to you. Verse 7, verse 8. Now he says, well, now, then he says, but... The, 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 the verse 7 says, but you say, how shall you return? Now he comes to answer the question. The people are saying, God, how can we return to you? Uh, now, this is the problem I have with church people. Take it or leave it. It is the truth. You may not understand it. You may have a problem with it. It is your problem, not my problem. You can choose to listen. You can choose not to do it. Like I said, it is not obligatory. It is out of your will. If you feel led to do it and convinced by the scripture, he says, God says, let me read it again. Yet, verse 7, Malachi 3, 7. Yet, from the days of your fathers, you have turned away from my statutes and my ordinances, and I have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, how shall we return? Verse 8. He has not asked a question. But you people say, how shall you return? Verse 8. He says, will a man rock go? Now he's coming to tell you how you can connect to him. How you can return to him. How you can bring back yourself to him. He say, will a man rock go? But you, yes, you have been robbing me. But you say, where we have been robbing you? In tithes and offerings you have withheld. 
He's talking about how do we return to him and he's talking how do we connect to him and he's talking about tithes and offerings. How do we return to him? He's talking about tithes and offerings. He said, you are, you are cursed with a curse for you are robbing me this whole issue. I, I don't even want to touch on that. The, this, this verse 9, you are cursed with a curse because you are robbing God. You are robbing God. Some people, they are not robbing banks. They are not robbing human beings. They are not con men. You, you have the audacity to call another man con man. You, you are, you are super con if you don't get tight. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny, but it's, it's real. God says, if you, you people are robbing me because you are not paying tight, you are robbing God. Hey, some, some of you are dangerous. So if, if a tighter, if, if a non tighter comes to your house, please hide your hide your wallets, hide your things. If they don't tight, they come to your house, hide your belongings because if they can rob God, who are you? If they can rob God, God is saying, you people are robbing me. Some of they have the mandate. They are too powerful. They are robbing God. Though. You, they will finish you. Super cold. You have the audacity and the impudence, infantry, to call somebody called man. Never, if you are, if you are not a tighter, never call somebody called man. God calls you a robber. He says, he says, you are robbing me. Now he says, bring all the ties, the tenth into the storehouse, so that they may be full in my house, and test me now in this, says the Lord, of course, if I will not open the windows of heaven unto you and, and pour you out a blessing until you not have any room to contain. You see, you see, God says, if now, verse 11 says, then I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And I will not, re and he will not destroy the fruits of your ground, and you will, and your vine, and the vine in the field and the grapes, says the Lord. God says, when you honor him with your tithes, he will now rebuild the devourer for your sake. Remember, I make, I put a disclaimer, it is not compulsory. I am, I want you to know the truth. If you can choose to do it or not to do it, it's not anybody's, you can just listen. The Bible says you can listen to the word and be like the Berean Christians. Go and search the scriptures for yourself. You understand? It's not compulsory. We are not here because ah, he wants us to pay time. No, 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 no. It is not compulsory at all. I am not teaching you because I want you to bring your tithe to me. Like I said, I am, according to my job description, I'm supposed to be collecting tithes and offerings. It's part of my JD as a pastor. So if you bring your tithe to me, I'll receive it and I'll pray for you. Are you getting me? I will pray for you and you'll be blessed and you continue getting blessed and you come out of financial. But it does, I'm not teaching you because I want you to do that. I want to put that. Is, you can take your tithe anywhere to any pastor, any man of God. But if you are led to bring it to me, I as a prophet, as, a, as your apostle, I'll take it and I'll bless you. Yet, he says, I will build the devourer for your sake and he will not destroy the fruits of your ground. The reason why some of you, you get money, money never stays in your hands, is because the devourer is never rebuilt. According, when income comes to you, give a tenth of it to the Lord. A tenth, one tenth of your income from your business, from your salary, from whatever it is that comes into your hands. The Lord requires a tenth of it. But some of you, you work mathematics with God. You are proper mathematicians when it comes to tithes. You see, I have got problems. I was telling one of my daughters, this, she gives tithes to the lowest decimal. She can give $300.45. I said, I clap my hands for her. I'm like, wow, my daughter, you are a proper mathematician. Can't you even run it? She says she doesn't want to get problems with God. She doesn't want to give 10.2%. God says 10%, so 10%. That is fine. She gives tithes to the lowest decimal. Through, I am saying sometimes I say, my daughter, just run it up. Sometimes you see the time with you, you see one point, three dollar point, something, something, go like, hey. But that is just by the way. Learn to honor God and come out of financial barriers. Number three, let me leave it there. Number four, I talk about psychological, um, 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 psychological, environmental barriers. 
and then financial barriers. The next barrier is what we call relational barriers. Relational barriers. Relational. Relational barriers. Relational barriers. Relational barriers. What are relational barriers? Those are barriers that stops you from relating to the right people. Haven't you realized that some people you don't just jail with them? You get to an office and you don't just, your boss is like there is a demonic spirit between you and your boss. You see, there is some of you, eh? your husband, the man you married, you that everything was going well. All of a sudden, the devil will bring some relational barrier, and nothing will begin to work. You see, some people are. I guess some people have started sending their tithes. It is received. God bless you. I just saw the message come through. Some, somebody just sent tithes now. God bless you for sending tithes. May you never lack. Like May the heavens open unto every tither of this ministry. Anybody that ties onto this ministry, send their partnerships in front of you and enlarge their territory. Bless the work of their hands. Let them come out of financial barriers in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Hear me and hear me well. Hear me and hear me well. Hear me and hear me well. Relational barriers are the most dangerous of all barriers. They are the most dangerous. Do you know why? Because when God wants to bless you, he uses a man. When the devil wants to destroy your life, he makes sure he places relational barriers between you and the person that is supposed to help you get to your next level. Imagine your boss can help you get promoted, but God, the devil will make sure he brings relational barriers between you and him. So that he doesn't help you. Relational barriers. Some of you. The right people that are supposed to help you. The devil will bring relational barriers. Between you and them. The man you married. The man was a good man. You, you, even, even you, you didn't even used to like the guy that much. But he pushed, got you, married you, everything was going on all of a sudden. The devil brings relational barriers. Let me tell you, relational barriers are one of the most dangerous barriers anybody can go through. I don't have much time to talk about it. But don't worry. Tomorrow, I will discuss it further. Let me tell you. Your blessing is not with God any longer. For your information. Your blessing is not with God any longer. For your information. The ties keep coming. God bless you all. Keep sending. God bless you. Keep sending the tithe. God bless you. And your hands shall be blessed. Don't do it just one month. Let it be a routine, a habit. Hear it. Relational barriers. Your blessing is not with God anymore. It is with man here. Uh, Papa, I'm praying for my husband. You are 35. Do you think your husband is yet to be born? No, the guy has already been born. It is up to you to find them. But there is a guy that is uh, your lady friend that is supposed to help you connect you to the guy that will marry you. You don't talk to that friend. There is a certain girlfriend of yours you have who you are supposed to talk to so that he, she will connect you to the person supposed to marry you, but you don't talk to her. Because you, you people, relational barriers, it is stopping your next level. Some of you, you are angry with everybody and bitter 
out with everybody. May every relational barrier the devil has placed in your life be broken now by fire. We break every relational barrier 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 by fire. Ain't the relational barrier. Ain't the barrier that is fight that is has been placed upon your life. I speak prophetically and I declare ain't the barrier between you and your marriage and your husband. Ain't the barrier barrier between you and your partner. Ain't the barrier that they are placed between you and your boss. Ain't the barrier between you and the man that is supposed to lift you to your next level. Today we remove. 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 In the name of Jesus, we break down satanic barriers. We break down satanic relational barriers. In the mighty name of Jesus, may Jehovah God cause you to experience a mega outpour. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, may Jehovah God break every relational barrier. When you are connected to the right person, everything begins to work. When you are not connected to the right person, things begin to go south. See, there are certain people in your life that God will use them to take you to your next level. Never disconnect yourself from them. I keep telling you, the day I saw this revelation, I knew how to relate with people. There are certain people, they are like your nails, your fingernails. Your fingernails. You can cut them every week. Every week you cut them. You can cut them. Like they are like your hair. You can cut them, they will grow back. You cut them, they will grow back. You can cut them as often as you want. Nothing. You don't. When I cut my nails, I don't feel nothing. When I shake my hair, I don't feel nothing. There are some people, when you cut them off your life, you don't feel anything. But there are some people when you cut them off your life, you will remain incapacitated and limited for the rest of your life. I'm telling you this. If I cut off my hand now, my right hand, will I die? No, I will not die. But I will remain an amputee for the rest of my life. I will remain limited. My, everybody will know that my right hand is not there. See, what the devil will do and what the devil has mastered to do in the lives of many people watching me tonight is this. The devil will make sure that the person that is your right hand, the person that is in your life, that is supposed to help your life advance, that is supposed to help you move forward, the devil will bring a serious fuse between you and, and, and the person. So what happens is that you find the person, there is pain, there is anger, there is bitterness between you and the person, and what happens? You, the, you lose the person. You lose the person. All right, so you will still live, you will be okay. Your life you will look okay. But your life will never be the same again. You will always feel the gap. You will feel some emptiness. You will feel that there, there is something wrong. That is what, if you met me earlier, some decisions possibly you will not have taken. The devil makes sure he disconnects you from the right people so that your life becomes incapacitated. You feel empty. Never make that stupid decision. Be careful. They are, they are fingernail relations and right hand relations. There are some people, they are your right, they are like your right hand. You can cut it, you still live, you survive, all right. But you will be empty. You will be an amputee. You will feel restrained and limited for the rest of your life. I pray that God will give you wisdom. I pray that God will give you wisdom to know which relationship to keep and which to break. I pray that you will not break your right hand relations. I pray that God will give you wisdom to keep the right people in your circle in the name of Jesus. Can I tell you something? Talents are not good enough. Giftings are not good enough. Relationships are everything. Knowing how to relate with people is everything. You can be as talented as what, but if, if you fail on knowing how to relate with people, you don't go far. 
You can be as gifted as what, but if you fail to know how to relate with people, you will not go far. You need grace. You need, you need the wisdom. You need the ability to understand certain things. You need to know how to relate with people. If you have the right connections, your life moves faster. One of the signs that you are cursed. Let me sit down a bit. One of the signs that you are cursed is that the devil will start to make you have problems with everybody in your life. Everybody that has the capacity to help you, you start having problems with them. I pray that God will give you grace to know the right hand relations and the nail finger nail relations. There are certain relations that God should grant you grace to keep it for the rest of your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to pray. You've got 30 minutes more to go. I want us to pray. I've spoken enough. God willing, tomorrow it shall be prayer throughout. Get your prayer gear ready. Tomorrow it shall be prayer throughout. Tomorrow it shall be prayer throughout. Get your prayer gear ready. Ready. Say in the name of Jesus. Every power of the enemy. Every power of the enemy. To put barriers between me and my destiny helpers. I command, let it catch fire. Every barrier between me and my destiny helpers, let it catch fire now. Every barrier between me and my destiny helpers, let it catch fire now. Lift up your voice and come and pray. Maziga branda baya. Ziga dua azidibi abrantes. Randa da bazuga branda bazuga bibi aba rapande zegedibi abrandos gibi abaya rapanda bajuanda da bazua adibi kabranta randa da bajanda bandibi abranda da bazua atea ene baria between me and my destiny helpers catch fire now Catch fire now, catch fire now, catch fire now. Mazigi di bia, raba ba 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 ba. Me a de 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 be zigri andosh. Every barrier between me and my destiny helpers, we declare, let it be removed by the power of the Holy Ghost. We declare, let it be removed by the power of the Holy Ghost. We declare, let it be removed by the power of the Holy Ghost. We declare, let it be removed by the power of the Holy Ghost. We declare, let it be removed by the power of the Holy Ghost. We declare, let it be removed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Mazika. Branda Bazua Adibi Cabrantes Rebebe Cabranda da Bazua Adibi Cabrantaba Rande de Beca Branda da Bacua Adibi Cabrantaba Rapanda Bazua Atene de Beca Branta Rependa Beca Branda da Bazua Ate Mi Anto Zi Apa Any barrier between me and my destiny helpers Let it be removed by fire Zika Dua Adene de Beca Rande de Bezia Ando Lobo Cabranda Rapada Pada Pada Bazua Antes, Rene de 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 capa, Rabadosa Rante tenda bebe andibis. Rababaza bandibi abrando Shagrande de Bekaba Zaye Azua Atele de Bekapaya Randa da Bagonde de Abranta Rapa da Bo Jage da Bazibi Ante Every barrier that the enemy has placed upon our lives we declare in the name of Jesus let them break every barrier between us and our destiny help us we remove by the fire of God we remove by the fire of God we remove by the fire of God. We remove by the fire of God. Zika dua azita. Mazoko dobo azidi bi antes. Rende de me abranda. Zokoye azidi bi apa. Randa de bazua ante. Rebe be 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 kapa. Rande bre andos kabrandi bi apaya. Zakea bazua ante te. Rende de me kabrande de me kapa. Rapa da pa da pa di bi antaya. 
Panda Pandi bi Ataya, Zeye Azua Agidi bi Antos, by the power of the Holy Ghost, we break every satanic barrier placed in our lives in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, sometimes this is what the devil will do. The devil will not bring the barrier directly between you and the person. The devil will send an agent. Somebody say an agent. Say an agent. The devil will send an agent that will come and discredit the person before you. That will come and tell you stories about the person. Now you begin to hate the person. And that is the highest level of foolishness on this planet. When you have experienced somebody for five years, for two years, for some time, and you allow an outsider to come and tell you a story that makes that person you have known for years look bad and you start to have an attitude and negative perception about the person. It is not wisdom, it is foolishness. Yes, because you have experienced, let, let, let me use, say, say, let me say, say, you have had, a, you've had a friend, you've had a friend for a long time, and your friend is helping you in life, your friend is making you advance, you people are, have got a mutual relationship, things are working for you, and another friend comes and says, hey, you don't know this man, Mary, Mary is a, Mary is a wicked person, no? Mary has done this, and Mary has never done any of those things this other person is telling you to do. But now you have the, the, the you, you, you have that mind, you are able to assimilate, buy a story from outside, and you have a problem with somebody you have known for long, and the relationship breaks and it affects you for the rest of your life. Don't be, don't be foolish. Be a wise person. Don't allow someone from outside to come and break and discredit a relationship you have had for long just because the person is telling you a story. For all you know, the story may be coming from a wicked person. For all you know, the, person, the story may be coming from, the person is the one that possibly wants to destroy what you have. I, always, I don't believe stories people tell me for, about people. I get to know, I experience people for myself. If I have got a mindset about you, as long as the connection is okay, it is okay. As to what somebody was telling me about you, I don't, I don't give a root. I don't care at all because it is, I don't know what transpired, where that made the person behave what. You understand? You need to make sure, don't just buy up a story that you were told, believe it, run with it, as if you were there. What if the person telling you everything they are telling you is a lie? Because I've seen it. I've seen people lie. Lie. Proper lie. Like lie. White lie. Colored with certificates. People can lie as if they, they did PhD. They did lying course in Harvard. People can lie. The devil will bring confusion. The devil will use an agent to bring a barrier between you and your destiny. Harvard. Experience people for yourself. Yes. Don't let stories. You don't know. This lady called Lydia. Prophet, you don't know her. Me, I know her. Prophet, this one. And so what? You see, you need to understand. Don't buy stories from people to destroy a good relationship you have. Otherwise, you will not go far. Because the devil will know that just you hearing things, it will affect you. You just buy up stories. And then you run with it. You have not verified the veracity of the story. You have not verified the, the, the authenticity of the story. You just buy it. It is the highest level of foolishness. The devil will lure you and make you go down. You are praying that anybody that the devil will use to come and destroy there are some marriages that are broken because a lady had. Some marriages that are relationships that are broken because a man had something. They had. May Jehovah God deliver you from evil people that will come and sell wrong stories to you and to your destiny. Sometimes also they will go and tell the story to your destiny partner, your destiny helper. They will, 
you are praying, anybody that will say something wrong to your destiny, help me. The fire of God consume whatever they will say. May their words not prevail. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. And anybody that the devil will send to you to destroy the relationship between you and your destiny, help us. May they be consumed by fire. Lift up your voice and pray now. Zagadibi Azua, Rabako Dobo Zagadias, Rondo Dobo Cabrantes, Repepepe Dibi Aduas, Randa da Branda Branda Bazua, Makodobo Jere de Levea, Randa da Baconde de Azias, Randa da Baconde de Azias, Randa Baconde de Azias, Randa Baconde de Azias, Randa Baconde de Azias, Raparaba Janda Rabaya, Raparaba Janda Rabaya, Raparaba Janda Baya, Raparaba Janda Rabaya, Raparaba Janda Rabaya, Raparaba Janda Rabaya, Mi Adorobo Shere, Robolo Shanda Rabayantea, Eka Panda Bandebe Abanda Badua Adele de Cabrandaba, Raba Banda Bandebe Abrandaba, Raba Banda Badebe Abrandaba, Raba Banda Badebe Abrandaba, Eka Panda Bazua Atelea, Makorobo Shende de Capa, Raba Babadua Cabrante Telebe Apaya, Mazua Antelebe Cabrantas, the Anto Daba Colibi Apa, Raba Bandibi Abranta, Beande Zegea Badibi Apa. Rapadua Cabrande de Capaya, Rende de Azua Atea, Meke de Azia Atea, Rande de Abra Azua, Apanda Bacode de Antaya, Rente de Bea, Rababan de Bea, Rande de Andia, Rande de Andia, Rande de Andia, Mazia Adede de Capa, Ramposia Abadias, Mi Ante de de Capa, Rababara Shandaba, lift up your voice and come on pray. May Jehovah God preserve you from wrong people, wrong relationship, people that the devil will send with the intention to destroy, to mess up your destiny helpers. Come on, lift up your voice. Mazigabo, Rabago, Zegedebe Abo, Randarabagosa, Raparabra Shandabaya, Rapandabako Debe, Rebebebebebeandaba, Rapandababa, Rapandebe Abrantaba. Rapa Panda Bako Jedebea, Redebe Kapa, Randa Bazua Atea, Mazia Antebea, Rebebebe Kapa, Rebebebe Kapa, Mazua Atebe Kabranta, Ranto Zi Adibi Azua, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, we make a prayer right now, we declare. Our relationships are preserved. Our destiny help us shall not turn away from us. In the mighty name of Jesus, God is giving us favor. In corporate circles, God is giving us favor. In every aspect of our lives, we receive favor. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I see great things happening for people. I see God releasing destiny helpers. I see God releasing destiny helpers. Yeah, Yazua. Miando ze ye ya bros ge ye ya bazias. May destiny help us be released right now. Receive it. Any person that is supposed to stay in your life by the power of God, we declare they are released without fail. In the mighty name of Jesus. Zagadibi habaya. Rababa, you are taking the next prayer. The last prayer, the last barrier are what we call satanic barriers. Satanic barrier. I told you there are five barriers. Environmental barriers, psychological barriers, financial barriers, relational barriers, five satanic barriers. I will deal with that. What we call satanic obstruction. I think I preached that about three, four years ago on Grace Hour. Satanic obstruction. Where the devil chooses to obstruct you. So tomorrow is going to be warfare. Are you hearing me? It's going to be warfare, satanic barriers, satanic barriers, say by fire, by fire. Every satanic obstruction, every relational barrier place in my life, let it break by fire. Let it cast fire now. Let it be destroyed by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, we destroy it now.
We destroy that satanic barrier now. Lift up your voice and come on praise. Zayos kabaha. Robos kabaye. Zegedebe abaya. Rande debe kaba. Zua ate. Zudibi andedebe. Skibidi andos. Zagidibi ados. Mayoske azias. Ropo do pondo bo zigibi andaya. Rapapa da branda bazua antes. Me andibi abrantala. Every barrier, any barrier the enemy has placed upon your life. Today we remove it by fire. 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 Nazika branda bazua. Every barrier on your relationships. Every barrier on your marriage. Every barrier on your finances. Every barrier on your location. Wherever they have placed a barrier. Father, we make a prayer now. Let that barrier be removed by fire. Let that barrier be removed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Zakadi bi azudi bi andayas. Rando no bo kabadi bi andayas. Hey, mazudi di di bi kabada. Randa da ba gode be abaya. Re ya ba ba zua agabaya. Hey, ya brando zgi abaya. Zudi bi ante tebe be kabaya. Rapa pa 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 da bra shanda ba. Rapa pa pa da bra shanda ba. Rapa pada bra shanda ba, 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 rapa pada bra shanda ba. Zika dolo boka ba, robo dibi adias, rende lebe kabaya, rapa pada bra shanda ba ya, abranda ba konde be de brianta, masua atere de de boka ba, rande de brianta da 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 boka ba, apandua asibi de boka. Randa da broski brianta pa, a pandi bi a tolo tolo boka pa, raba ba za brande be abrandos, via a zudi bi abaya, mandi bi abranda na bakosa, me ye za ye za ye za ya, zibi antos, rande de be kapa, raba ba na bakose brianta, mi anto tolo boska branta, mi anta banda ba di bi anta ya, by the power of the Holy Ghost, we break every satanic barrier. We break every limitation in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. We declare the barriers are broken. We declare the barriers are broken. There is somebody that is watching me right now. The Lord is telling me you have tried to go to the United States of America. Three times, all of them you have been denied. The Spirit of God is telling me exactly in the month of February 2022, apply, you shall be granted. You hear me? Exactly in the month of February 2022, you have been you have applied for US visa three times. You have been refused. The Lord is telling me, if you are the one, you can comment and say, Papa, I'm the one. If you are not shy, just say, Papa, I'm the one. Let me zoom into your life. You have applied for US visa three times. You have been refused. February 2021, apply. It shall be granted. Receive it. Receive favor. Receive favor. Receive favor. Receive favor. There is a lady that is watching me. You have, you have got a daughter by the name of Nima. Your daughter is called Nima. 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 Your daughter is called Nima. Comment and say, Papa, my daughter is Nima. Let me zoom into your life. Your daughter's name is called Nima. Zane Kadua Bazua. Zandibi Abroskibi Abrasa. Robobo Shodo. There is somebody watching me. You come from Ghana. Your name is Diodu. 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 If you live in the UK, we say Diodu. You slant this slightly, but your name is Diodu from Ghana. I hear the spirit of the Lord telling me, I should declare to you, every barrier in your life is broken now. Every satanic barrier that the enemy placed upon your life is permanently broken in the name of Jesus. There is a lady by the name of Ethel. Ethel, the Lord is telling me, you of there have been financial barriers in your life for a long time now. Your season to come out of financial that barrier is now. Hey, Mazigaba. Mercy, your mercy, your daughter is Nima. Mercy, the spirit of God is telling me, I should release a preservation over your daughter. I see a young girl, a very young girl. I don't know whether it's about five hours. I mean, it's not even up to ten, I guess. The spirit of God is telling me that there is, I should release preservation over your girl. She carries a bright star and a bright future. The spirit of God is telling me it is a season to be honored and be elevated. Anything from his father, from her father's family that has frustrated her life and limit that limits women. I decree and declare by the power of God, a 
it shall not come to her in the name of Jesus. It shall not come to her in the name of Jesus. It shall not come to her in the name of Jesus. Maziga Bahania, Rabba Kodobo Shegede, Zibi Ando, Zigiribi Azua, Ropopo Yozo, the Bose Grianda, Zibi Adua Babasua, Zayeke, I bind any power that restrains people from her life. I declare that Nima shall be a great woman. Nima shall shine. Her star will shine in the name of Jesus. Maziga Bazua. Rabba Bakodo Boshekete. Zibri Ando Skibri Andaya. Hear me and hear me well. Mercy, I don't know, but I see in the month of August. The month of August, I see honor coming your way. I don't know who in you, other Nima or you that is born in August. I see a celebration being thrown in the month of August. But I pray for you in the name of Jesus' mercy. Whatever restriction upon your life, upon your daughter's life, I break it. I break it. May Jehovah God cause you to shine. You have tried your best several times, in, but in every time you feel stuck. But the Lord is bringing help to you. My help is coming your way. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Zagadibi Aduaba. Christine Kwamanda. Christine Kawanda, El Kawanda, Kawanda, I pray for you, Christine Kawanda. Anything that has ever restrained you, may you get on the highway of divine speed. You shall not be delayed any longer in the name of Jesus. Christine Kawanda, in the realm of the spirit, you are moving in life, but all of a sudden I saw a net that was thrown over you to draw you backwards. But the angel of the Lord that is speaking to me now. Say, I should break that demonic net that they want to come use to bring delay to your life. I break it in the name of Jesus and I declare, enter your season, my God. Zagatibi adua, zukru azinde debe kapa, ey mazua. Christine, barriers in your life are destroyed. 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 In the mighty name of the Lord. Zika Tuba Baye. Zikri Anta. Nobody seems to be doing well in your family. Everybody seems stagnated and frustrated, Christine. But the Lord is speaking to me. I should decree and declare every change that has held your life, your family, is broken in the name of Jesus. May you receive divine help. May help come for you and your siblings. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Mazika diya maha. Roboske azita. Peye zebri andos kabahaya. Zibi atuwapa. Mi antolo no wakapa. Someone says, my son has applied for US visa three times. We break every environmental barrier that is restraining the life of your son. And we decree and declare a favor come upon him. Let favor come upon him. Let favor come upon him. Alice, may your son receive favor for his next level in the name of Jesus. Manzi Gabrado Agabaya. Robobo Kabrazi Gibi Agabaya. Robobo Kabrazi Gibi Agabaya. Randebe Kabranta. Mi Antolobo Kapa. By the power of God, we declare total deliverance. Total deliverance. Total deliverance. Total deliverance. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Zika Baye Azua. Randa Nabakono Mosha. Abrantes, repende bekandi mi apa, rapa da pa da padua azibi di mi kabaya, mi tondo dobo kabrantes, rende de be kaba. We declare total deliverance right now. We declare total deliverance right now. Anything that is restraining your life, we bind it by fire. Ramba zukabe, rapa pa pa pa, rambi abranta. Nimi Azukapaya. If you are watching me, you 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 sell things like secondhand clothes, secondhand clothes, secondhand clothes. That is why you are into you are into secondhand clothes. I pray for you. Every barrier upon your business is broken. Every barrier upon your business is broken. The Lord is releasing divine help to your business. Receive it in the name of Jesus. There is somebody watching me. You are from Zimbabwe. Room. Room design, room design.
Bizai is your name. Room Bizai Kapapiro. Room Bizai Kapapiro. You are originally from Zimbabwe. Room Bizai Kapapiro. I break every barrier, every relational barrier that frustrates people around you and makes your life get stagnated. Room Bizai from Zimbabwe. I hear the spirit of the Lord say, I should set you free from the bondage that restrain your life. Receive total deliverance right now. Receive total deliverance right now. Room Bizai from Zimbabwe. An angel of the Lord is speaking to my right ear that I should declare safety and deliverance to you. Receive your deliverance right now. Receive your deliverance right now. Receive your deliverance right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mazika Bahandeya. Nanai Jewa Ampedu. Nanai Jewa Ampedu. I pray for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. May divine speed be released on your behalf. Every spirit of delay is broken by the power of God. Zagadua Babaye. Zikri Antonogos. Vrandibi Azua. There is a young man today is your first time of watching. Your name is Ikechuku from Nigeria. Today is your first time of watching. Your name is Ikechuku from Nigeria. The Spirit of God is speaking to me. Ikechuku, hear the voice of God. Last week, Ikechuku, you tried to commit suicide. Your life is frustrated. You are at a place nothing seems to work. You have got a degree, but you don't have a job. Life has become so difficult. The Lord is speaking to me. Don't harm yourself, and I should tell you, don't harm yourself. Help is coming to you. Don't, there is a mega drop that is coming your way. The job you had applied for long, they are going to call you. You even went for the interview, but they told you you were declined. They are going to call you and tell you that they, there is an opening that has come. Ikechuku, don't kill yourself. Favor is coming to you. Favor is coming to you. Favor is coming to you. There is a lady from Ghana. Your name is Evelyn. Evelyn, the spirit of God is speaking to me. Evelyn from Ghana, I pray for you. Any power that has restrained you today, we break it. Rise to your next level of honor. Rise to your next level of favor. Rise to your next level of honor. I, Evelyn, I see honor coming to you. I see you being honored. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Zagadua baye. Zugru azika By the power of God, I see a shift coming. I see a shift coming. I see a ship 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 coming. In the name of Jesus, man, see Gabrada Maya. Zeke debe abara. Zuan debe kaba. Mi antaya. Ika dibi ate. Zika branda baya. Mazuka dibi ataya. By the power of God, we declare a turn around in the name of Jesus. We declare a turn around in the name of Jesus. We declare a turn around in the name of Jesus. We declare a turn around in the name of Jesus. We declare a turn around in the name of Jesus. We declare a turn around in the name of Jesus. Mazuka Brandea, Robo Azikabaya, Mi Antorobo Zibia, Rene Lebeka Bandi Abha, Brandoske Abrasite. I want us to make a prayer. I'm just hearing something and when I hear some things that are scary I pause the Bible says the ministry of the prophet is subject to the prophet it's not everything I see that I say there are some things you have to I have to wait to know whether I should say it publicly or not Hear me. They are some too serious. Two people that the enemy want to target, want to make intercession for in the nation of Kenya. Two people. Mega names. Want to make intercession for them. Want to make intercession to reverse. The spirit of death. It's a mega artist. A mega artist that sings. Mega one. Big name. That the enemy is targeting. I want us to pray that every plot of the enemy 
we command and declare, let it backfire. A singer, a singer, big name. Sadibi Azudibi Abrande Azuta. The Bible says that Peter was put in prison, but prayer was made for Peter. And Peter came out of prison. The, the other day, Jesus told Peter, The enemy sought to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you. Say, The devil sought to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you. That is what Jesus said. Let me read a scripture for you before we make that prayer. Look. Go to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Verses 31. Say, Simon, Simon, this is Jesus speaking. Listen, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like grain, but I have prayed for you, Peter, that your faith and confidence in me will not fail. Hear me. The devil sought to destroy Peter. But Jesus said, I have prayed for you. What the Lord simply means is that prayer can avert, preserve the life of people. Prayer. Want to make a prayer? I have a name that I don't want to mention for the sake of uh, see some 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 people make stories of nothing and they twist words sometimes of men of God. I'm a wise man. I've seen too much. We want to have peace, but let's pray. We want to pray that every attack of the enemy against any artist, singer, we declare, let it backfire in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice, come and pray. Lift up your voice, come and pray. Zagadi bi azua. Rande de bo shaka. Father, we make a prayer by your power and your spirit. We command preservation over lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, any premature death we cancel. We speak life, we speak life, we speak life in the name of Jesus. Mazigabo, Zigri and Dodobo, Zabahaya, Zianto Zibaye, Zabrandi Bikapa, Rabadozi Adedebi, Cabrantata, Randi Bikapa, Zayaba Azudibia, Rababa Kolebi Abrante, Sibri Antabaya, Randi Debi Cabrantata, Zagadia Adosa, Rapa da Pandibi Azua, in the mighty name of the Lord, we command preservation of life. 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 We command preservation of life in the name of Jesus. By the stripes of Christ, we declare total preservation. The Bible says, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. We plead the blood as a cover over every life, every soul. We decree and declare in the mighty name of Jesus. In the premature death, we avert it. In the name of Jesus. Kazibi Aduaza. 